today's jazz guitar lesson, I'll teach you how to play a guitar solo over Fly Me to the Moon. Hi, my dear jazz guitar aficionados around the globe. Sandra Sherman here. Greetings from Austria. I'll explain the theory, scales, arpeggios, and other musical tools you can use. You learn the entire solo note for note, and there is a slow tempo playthrough towards the end of this lesson. I've made tabs and backing tracks which you can download from either down below in the description box or the card up above and uh, please also visit my lesson shop guitarversum.com for more lesson material and now let's listen to the full playthrough at regular tempo for my guitar solo over fly me to the moon I play Fly Me to the Moon in the most popular key for instrumental versions, which is E flat major. And we have an A1 and an A2 section. Each of these are 16 bars long, so we have a total of 32 bars. Here we go. All right, here are the first eight bars. I break it all down for you, and then I play it again at slow tempo. Here we go. All right, we start with the C minor chord and I use the uh, C minor pentatonic. I start on the uh, fifth of the chord, that's the G. Then I have a chromatic on the offbeat. I do a pull off, I make a pull off because that's good jazz phrasing, pull off from offbeat to beat. Now I go down the pentatonic, right? And that's the first bar. Then I F minor 7 and I use a superimposition and that's playing a different arpeggio than the root arpeggio. So we are in F minor now and I don't play the F minor arpeggio, I play an A flat major 7. So the rule is play a major arpeggio over a minor chord from its third. The minor third of F is A flat, so I play an A flat major arpeggio. Bridge over. This is a syncopation, and now I have a little enclosure to that D, and that's my target tone on beat one of the B flat seven, all right? So this is the third, this is my target tone. I enclose it from above, above, below, and here's my target tone, all right? Now I go uh, B flat seven, alto scale, well, actually here is the regular fifth, the perfect fifth. So it's just the arpeggio, basically. And now I go to the altered scale, which is the B melodic minor scale. B flat, semitone up, melodic minor, B melodic minor, and there's a B minor triad in there. So I play that triad. I glide down here, bridge over the first three strings. And, and the root of the B minor, that's the flat nine of the B flat. Resolution, the one chord E flat major, and I just play chord tones. I see this chord, I, so I resolve. Semitone resolution is always the best ever. So the, um, the listener hears your change. Then I play uh, the third of the chord, the ninth of the chord, and the root. So E flat major 7 with a ninth in there. Let it rest a bit. And now 
I have actually I play this song like a lot of people do with that A7 flat 5 substitution in the second half. So E flat goes to A and I chose the um, C sharp is the third of the chord, but actually it's just a chromatic to the resolution, the A flat major, which is now, and the C is the third of the A flat plus the root. So it's just a little add on, right? Now, I have an enclosure again. We now get to that D half diminished, G altered, C minor cadence in minor. I see that F, this is my target tone for the D half diminished, that's the minor third, and I enclose it, three way enclosure, two from above, one from below, and here's my target tone and I slide into it, right? Now I play an F minor seven arpeggio, this is another superimposition. For the half diminished, play from its third again, which is F, a minor seven chord, all right? F, A flat, C, E flat, that's a minor seven, and that's a D half diminished flat nine. We'll lose, when we do this, superimposition from the third, we'll lose the root, we'll lose the D, because we start from the third, but we add the ninth, or in this case, the flat ninth. So we add a colored tone, and we'll lose the root, which is played by the bass anyway. So, now I pull off to that D and I now play a regular D half diminished chord uh, arpeggio. D, F, A flat, C stretch a little bit. So that was it for D half diminished. Now to G altered. And I play a typical bebop phrase here. I go to that. Here's, I see chords everywhere. And it can't be like cowboy chords. It doesn't matter. It's just so I see chord tones that I can target. And um, so I target this B here, and I play a bebop phrase, bebop, bebop, chromatically down to the uh, seventh of the chord, the uh, F, pull off, it's an offbeat, two beat, E flat, and here's the resolution to C minor, and what I do is I play an uh, indirect resolution. So I start on the ninth of the C minor. D is the ninth. I play C minor nine pentatonic. And I and I land on the ninth as well. Right? And now I have a C altered at the end of this. So I don't want to remain on that ninth. I go to the flat nine and the root, right? These are just pickup notes for the upcoming resolution, the F minor, which is going to be in the next phrase, all right? So uh, let's play through all this at slow tempo. Three, four. And here are the second eight bars of the A1 section. We start with the resolution, the F minor chord. We come from that uh, C altered. And now the resolution is A flat and F. Playing over the bar line. Four and one and here's the F minor. Then a little rest and now I play an enclosure <coughs> in the F minor pentatonic. Here's the chord, here's the F minor pentatonic. And I slide into that B, and we are now on the B flat altered chord. And that B is the flat nine. And I play the B flat half tone whole tone scale. And that gives me the sound impression of a B flat 13 flat nine chord. So it sounds like this. The B flat in bass, right? And that's a really cool scale. It's a symmetrical scale. So this is already half tone above the B flat. Whole tone, half tone, whole tone, etc. All right? But I played in triplets. So make sure to accent the right notes. 
And here's the resolution E flat arpeggio. I slide into the E flat, right? Then a little add on arpeggio chromatic. And that helps me slide into the C altered chord. Here's the C. Now for the C altered chord, I play the uh, C Phrygian dominant scale, and that's actually the F harmonic minor scale. C7 resolves to F minor in the next bar, and so you think F minor, but harmonic minor, so you get that E from the C chord, right? I slide into that C. And resolution for the F minor again. Here is the third of the A uh, of the F minor, and that's the uh, A flat. If you watch my videos, I play this often. This is one of my favorite resolution licks. It's my own, actually. <laughs> that's like this chord. Beautiful, isn't it? And now the five chord B flat altered. I play the B flat altered scale. Right, one and triple let. And the resolution for E flat major is the fifth and the third of the chord. Rest, rest, and closure to the last D half diminished in G7. Then the A section is uh, done. I close that D. Two in closer, so you start on count four, three, four, and one. I slide into it, and now I just play a pure D half diminished arpeggio, D F A flat C. Slide to the B, which is the third of the G seven, and I play a um, B diminished arpeggio, and that gives me a G seven flat nine chord. So again, from the third. For, the, for this trick, you can play it from any chord zone except from the root, but from the third. And it gives you like a G7 flat 9 sound. And next will be the resolution to that, but that's the next phrase. phrase. But first, let me play through phrase number two, the entire eight bars at slow tempo. Here you go. Two, three, four. Welcome to the A2 section, here are the first eight bars. We start with the C minor at nine arpeggio here, the resolution from that um, D half diminished G altered C minor. Now I land on, here's the chord, right, C minor at nine. Now a little pickup, F. Uh, oh, sorry, B flat E into the F. We are now on F minor seven, and I play in the F Dorian scale, and now an A flat major arpeggio. We had that already. A flat major seven is perfectly or fine over uh, F minor, right? Oh, sorry. Here's the triplet. Now I enclose the upcoming B flat. I see that B flat seven chord here. Again, it doesn't matter if this is kind of a cowboy chord. I would not play this when I comp, but it's good to visualize, right? So I wanna land here. I enclose it from above, from below again, because I wanna, otherwise I wouldn't be here on beat one. So I have to go down again. Now I'm here on beat one, and I play a Charlie Parker line. 
right? So this is a mix of altered and non-altered. This is a non-altered tone, that's the ninth of the B flat altered. This is also non-altered, and now he goes into the altered scale. That's D and B flat. And the resolution. E flat major. Those chord tones. And now we have that, remember? A7, that tritone sub again, and I play that. I use that C sharp uh, because it fits the A7, of course, but also I use it as a um, an enclosure to that C. Start on the C sharp, below, below, target tone for the A flat major. We had something like this before. Here's the one. Now I'll play around the A flat major arpeggio in uh, octaves. Which leads me to the D half diminished. I make a pull off here from off B to B again. So I'm on the 11th, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm on the root of course. I'm on the root of now. I play around the D locrian scale a little bit now, which is the F Dorian by the way. <coughs> C, B flat. G, I slide into the A flat. I now play an F minus seven arpeggio. Uh, it's a uh, yeah A flat, C, E flat, and I slide into that F. So I play horizontally in the D Locrian scale via an F minus seven arpeggio inversion. And now I'm on G altered for the next tone. I go from here to here. I see my G altered chord here. Start on its third. Play another Parker line, very popular line. Uh, a regular arpeggio. And now the flat nine and a sharp nine is being added and pull off with a triplet hammer pull. And now the resolution C minor. I go here, I could go here, but I want to go to the next pattern. So I play this E flat, which is the third of the C minor here, a chord tone. Of course, I, you should land on chord tones, okay? And now it's getting a little faster. Triple it. These were 16th, one and E slide into this E flat major seven arpeggio, triple it. And now C altered for the second half of the bar. And I go to the flat nine, that's D flat. It's root, uh, sorry, it's third. And back to the flat nine. In triplets, ha uh, pull off to the, to the root, flat seventh, and a G. Alright, and here is the entire phrase number three at slow tempo for you. Here we go. Three, four. and here are the last eight bars of the guitar solo and I start with the resolution. I come from that C altered chord and I, I glide into the uh, A flat which is the third of the F minor. We are now in F minor and the fifth of the chord. And now for the rest of the bar I play an F melodic minor scale. I start on the D, which is the sixth, the avoid note, but it's perfect to start that scale on the sixth, so you get to that major seven immediately after. So I like to start on those important notes, the sixth and the major seven, all right? And I play in triplets. Well, the first note is uh, is an eighth note. Three and triplets. 
Paulette. And now I go to the B flat, and this one time it's not altered. The B flat is an unaltered chord when it doesn't resolve, and it doesn't because after it we have a G half diminished. So I keep on playing that scale. Now it's called mixer sharp 11. It's the same scale, F melodic minor. minor. But now I change to the regular mixer scale. So the mixer sharp 11 would be here. I go to the regular 11, regular mixer scale, because I now go backwards. And backwards, the mixer sharp 11 doesn't sound good, okay? Because it wants to resolve to F. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't sound good. All right, so I play over the bar line from F minor to B flat. little uh, chromatic and closure to that D. Again. Here's the D of the B flat. All right, and now I play a little bebop thing again. All right, the whole thing. This last one of this motif, oh sorry, this one already belongs to the G half diminished chord now. That's the flat third and the root, of course. A little rest and a G half diminished, diminished um, arpeggio inversion, right? That leads me to the C altered and I play the F harmonic minor scale again. We had this before and this uh, this time I'm in a different pattern. Sharp 5. Slide down to the third of the chord. Diminished arpeggio. Remember I told you you can play from any chord tone of an altered chord except for the root and play a diminished arpeggio. That diminished arpeggio is part of the F harmonic minor scale. Resolution to F minor. Here's the F minor 7 chord, and it's just chord tones. A flat is the minor third, and the root, of course, right? And closure that leads me to B flat altered now again. Chromatic above, scale tone below, chromatic below to my third of the B flat. A Joe Pass here, a really cool Joe Pass line now. I bridge over, so get that sharp five as well. Back to the third. B to B flat. And now an augmented chord. This is awesome, Aug augmented arpeggio. And the resolution now is not direct but indirect resolution. Goes on the ninth of the E flat, root, ninth, and here is the third on B2 and, and that's the final tone. So we have kind of like an E flat major nine da, 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 at the end. And the last, uh, the last bar I don't play, that would be D half diminished to G, um, because you always want to leave room for the next guy to pick up his solo, okay? Here's the uh, last eight bars, phrase number four at slow tempo. Before I play the entire tune at slow tempo, let me recommend to you my solo playlist. I have solos like this one on for Blue Bossa, All the Things You Are, and uh, some more. Check it out, and now let's listen to the whole song at slow tempo.
If you like my Fly Me to the Moon guitar lesson, please give it a fat thumbs up so you make this video more visible on YouTube and keep my channel growing. Please share the love and the knowledge. I see you next week. Servus. Bye-bye.